Hello, this is Danny from the DM Art Classes and welcome back to part three. So today we're going to have a look at the camera menu here at the top. So you have different options. You have perspective and autographic. Autographic will give you a dead flat on view with no perspective. If you click the camera icon with the arrows in the bottom here to snap to view, two fingers on the screen to pan and perspective. You can adjust how much perspective you want by using the slider here. And also you have options here to adjust the speed of, for example, if I put this rotation speed up, it, it does it very, very quickly. I keep all of these set to one normally, panning the same as well. It will just pan a lot faster. So it, it's up to you what you prefer. And if you double tap, on a part of the mesh, it will focus in on that two finger tap, two finger tap, two finger tap. Okay. This icon in the bottom here will reset view and this one for snap, snap, snap. I'll just make some marks so you can see exactly. So when I boom, snap on the side, just like that. These I use regularly, and then reset view. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to this brush menu here. So I'm gonna do a little rundown of the brush options we've got on the side. We've got clay, brush, move, drag, smooth, mask, cell mask, paint, etc. So first off, in this setting area, you've got a thing called alpha. And alpha is basically your pen tip. So for example, the clay setting, I, I'd never really changed the alpha on the clay setting. So for example, the clay brush here is really nice for building up some forms. Uh, you've got the sub button here to carve in. So if you're just working some forms into your object, the clay can be a really nice brush for this and you can use your smooth. There we go. As you can see, you, you, you can make some some quick adjustments and also as well right now we have the chance to use a voxel remesh because I'll put my wireframe on here let's just stretch this out with the clay okay so we'll stretch some polygons okay so you see here just on the edge here so this area you will not be able to sculpt because of you need some clean topology so you can build up details so at the bottom here in the square grid icon you can activate this by coming over to your interface settings here and your quick uh, bottom buttons. So I have the voxel remesh, the wireframe camera set. I actually have all of these activated. So as you can see here, if you want to click, it removes them. So I like to have my wireframe and voxel remesh there. So you go here, you can choose your resolution through voxel and that will be set then. And then in the future, you can just use your thumb or whichever finger you wish. You lose your multi-resolution when you do this, but that's fine. And we can start sculpting details there again, like this. If you wanted to, let's put that back. Have your resolution lower. Press the shortcut key. There we go. Ideally, at the beginning, you want to keep your resolution as low as possible until you have your basic forms down. And then you can start increasing your topology. So let's just do another example. So this is all stretched out here. You can't add any more details on top there. So we'll voxel remesh. Now you can. Just like that. Okay. So let's uh, two finger tap to undo everything. In fact, I'll come to the history menu here and back to this. So this is your alpha setting. You can change this. I will show you on the brush instead. Brush has none, but what you can do is I have some preloaded alphas here. Just to give you an example, I'll switch off the wireframe. So you can see it's a different effect. Now if you put it onto none, the brush is like this. You use your sub menu to carve in. Like that. But 
the use of alphas can be really good. I like to use alphas a lot when I'm detailing at the end, once I've got my basic forms. So for example, what I would do is use the grab dynamic radius. You just pull out and it does that. You can decrease your intensity. So if you're detailing, you have quite a lot of control of where it goes. Rather than if you use the dot setting in stroke, it'll pull across. Let me just get a fresh side so you can see like that. So that's quite a nice effect. With the alphas, you can import your own alphas because this uh, program won't come with any, but you can find many online. You just type in like a skin alpha or things like this and you, you'll find them online. So you can go through, import them, and you'll have them. You can build up your own little library of alphas like this. So the move brush is where you can pull out different forms. So if we want to stretch this, maybe turn it into, I don't know, like a creature head, for example. And if you press the here, this will pull out. If you have the minus selected, it will go in. So we can turn this into like a head of some sort. Good. And here you can switch your grid off. There you go. I prefer to have the grid off. The drag brush will help you to pull pieces out like this. So with the drag brush, this can be one of the best times to use your dynamic topology. Put your detail level up. Without, I will give you an example of what happens without it. So this is when I use it without dynamic topology. You see here, you have all these details. You can use voxel to, to fix that, or you can just enable dynamic topology. And then when you use your drag, there we go. So you can make some little horns. Okay. And then you have your smooth brush. With this, you do have the option to relax your topology. So if I go back to the drag brush here, I'll disactivate dynamic topology. So let me pull this out, put the wireframe on, so we can see the topology here. Let's go to the smooth. In an option here, you have relaxed topology. So you see this is stretched here. So this will just relax it down a little bit. Rather than smoothing the details out, it'll more adjust the topology to the details which you already have. Let's use an example here. It'll adjust to the forms that you have. This can be useful. Otherwise, you can just have it like this, this like the smooth brush. Okay. Now, this is the masking tool. Very, very useful. As you can see here, you also have a mask icon here. Shortcut key. So what I can do here is I'll press my mask, or actually if you have the mask selected there. Masking will allow you pr to protect different areas. So now if I go to my clay, the area which is masked will not be affected by my brush. So I can build up around here and it won't affect the eye sockets for example. Okay, then if you want to invert it, you press the mask and you tap with one finger and this will invert your mask and then it will be protected. Okay. And then to clear the mask, hold the mask button and drag your pen across outside of the object and it will clear the mask.
Uh, also, we can do, let's do a mask here. Let's invert that. I'll use my gizmo. And select the per vertex. This will go to the area which is unmasked. Drag it out. Smooth. Dun, 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 dun. Unmask, hold, drag out. Okay. So yeah, if you're trying to just add areas and you don't want to affect the surrounding area, you use your masking tool. Masks are can be incredibly useful. Okay, let's say I've got that mask there. I'll invert my mask. You can use your move brush, for example. You can pull these out just to that area. Invert the mask. Okay. Also, as well here, for your masking brush, your mask settings. So you can clear it, two finger to undo. You can invert it here. You can blur it, makes it less strong. Sharpen it, so it's more strong. Blur, sharpen, invert, sharpen, etc. 